Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very recent study that may have identified at least one really good candidate for what dark matter could actually be. In other words, scientists may have finally discovered at least one particle that could represent dark matter, assuming of course we discover it somewhere out there. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So, if we look around the universe, we'll discover a lot of signs pointing at the existence of the mysterious dark matter, but so far still no good explanation of what's really causing it. But there have been a lot of interesting discoveries in the last few years, and more specifically, one discovery in regards to this unusual particle that was identified back in 2011. And it's basically a type of a particle that we refer to as hexa-quark. Now, I'm gonna have to explain some things here. First of all, let's look at a typical atom. This here is helium, and what you'll see inside the typical atom are two protons, two neutrons, and here we have two electrons to make this a neutral atom of helium, which is basically the second most common element out there. Now the atom itself is a whole piece, you can actually move it around, and I've seen this done in a lab here in Seoul, where an atom of iron was actually moved with a little needle in order to create a certain pattern. So these tiny pieces create a larger piece. But then if you look inside of, for example, proton and neutron, you'll discover that they're also made of other stuff. And I remember asking some of my teachers in high school, what are they made of? And the answer I got was quarks. But that's where the teacher kind of stopped because, well, as they explained to me later, this was really, really complex and even beyond their understanding. And as I kind of started learning about this myself, I nodded and said, yeah, this stuff is really, really complicated. So as we go down into the subatomic scale, things do get a little bit more complicated. And by combining these different types of quarks, you also get different types of particles. So for example, if you combine two up quarks with one down quark, you get a proton. And by combining different types of quarks, you get different types of particles. And although a lot of them do have three quarks, it turns out that you can have more. As the scientists originally learned in 2011 and then confirmed in 2014, hexaquarks also exist. And they do seem to be extremely strange and very different from anything we've ever seen. They don't seem to exist here on Earth, this was created in a lab, and they only lasted for a tiny, tiny fraction of a second. But that was enough for scientists to start asking questions of what exactly is this particle and could this be the dark matter that we're looking for. And so now, a few years later, the two scientists that wrote this paper decided to analyze this in a lot more detail and discovered that there's a huge chance that it can totally be dark matter. And according to these two scientists, the so-called hexaquark is capable of creating a very stable Bose-Einstein condensate. Okay, so not a really complex concept. Bose-Einstein condensate, also known as BEC, is kind of, in a sense, another state of matter. So we're all familiar with at least three of them for sure, with the fourth one being also really important. So we have the liquid state, we have the solid state, the gas state, and the fourth state that's uh, also very important is the so-called plasma state. We know all four exist on our planet and we can actually generate them pretty easily with uh, things like increasing decreasing temperature. But then there's the fifth state, which happens when things get really really cold and when the gas gets really 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 thin. And to try to explain to you what BC is and why it's kind of important, here's a very short animation. So when the gas starts to cool down, eventually every atom starts behaving a little bit differently. As the atoms become colder and colder and colder, their quantum nature becomes a lot more apparent. In other words, they start to behave a lot more like waves than particles. And as you cool them down even more, eventually they reach the state where their waves start to interact with one another and eventually actually combine into one large chunk. This chunk is what we refer to as BEC, Bose-Einstein condensate. So here you'll see it in a few seconds and this becomes this huge kind of a quantum state where every single atom is connected to one another and we can easily observe this and measure this. So this is a really important state and it only happens at very low temperatures, very close to zero um, Kelvin. And essentially it only happens when the gas is relatively low in density. But it just so happens that the analysis from these scientists determined that if you were to create conditions of extreme heat and extreme pressure, very similar to, I guess, the beginning of the universe, the hexa quark we discovered back in 2011 would actually form this 
BEC as well. They would create this really large Bose Einstein condensate that would actually be relatively stable, would be able to survive for a very, very long time, and most importantly, there will be so much of it produced around the universe that it could easily explain all of the mysterious effects we're observing that seem to indicate the existence of dark matter. So in a nutshell, what these scientists suggest is that right here in the beginning of the universe, the conditions were just right for all of this BEC hexaquark stuff to be created. It then combined into these huge chunks of matter that most likely became stable over time and is still there orbiting around somewhere around the universe where we expect dark matter to be. And what's super important about this particular study and this discovery is that it doesn't actually invent any new physics, it doesn't seem to change anything about our gravity or about the way that the universe works. It actually uses the particle that we already discovered and confirmed, it uses the state of matter that we know really well, and it then uses it to explain the universe that we're observing. So here everything seems to connect really well. The only thing that we're missing right now our actual physical observations of these hexaquarks somewhere out there beyond our planet Earth. Now, the scientists behind this paper already proposed several ways we could detect them. For example, they believe that by interacting with the upper atmosphere of our planet, they're going to produce a very specific cosmic ray that we can maybe find. Or we could use different space missions that are able to detect cosmic rays relatively accurately to try to find out if some of those cosmic rays came from the elimination of two hexaquarks that created a lot of energy. In other words, from the destruction of dark matter itself. And so even though technically right now it's still theoretical, the theory behind this is really, really good. Now, it might take a few years to actually confirm this or possibly disprove this, but I'm pretty sure a lot of scientists will become really interested in trying to figure out if hexaquark that we see right here might be responsible for the mysterious dark matter after all. And another way we could probably prove this is by creating all of this in the lab by trying to create several of these hexaquarks and then seeing if they do behave in the way that we expect them to behave. But because they're kind of difficult to create, this might take a while. And honestly, no matter what we discover about hexaquarks, this is definitely one of the more exciting theoretical studies of the last few months. Hopefully within the next year we'll have a clearer answer on what's really happening with the hexaquarks and if it is really dark matter. But for now, that's kind of all we know. It's a brilliant theory, but it needs to be proven. Until we discover more, subscribe, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and maybe support this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by getting the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm also wearing right now as well. But anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.